I have heard college admissions officers say point blank that if one kid has SAT scores and the other kid doesn't, the prevailing assumption is going to be that the kid without SAT scores couldn't do well on the test. A lot of people are also asking, what does it mean that colleges are going to be test optional? And is this a thing that's going to stick long term? This is a good question. And I don't really know the answer because obviously I don't have a crystal ball, but these are some of my predictions and some of the things that I think about when I'm answering this question for my kids. The University of California made a landmark decision earlier this year. First, they had a huge commission on whether or not they should keep standardized tests. And they made a big decision that, yes, we want to keep standardized tests in April. And then in May, completely reversed their decision and said, we are going to get rid of all standardized tests forever. We're going to be like, we're just not going to look at them and they're not important to us, which is striking and really interesting. The UC system is probably the best state system in the United States, the most prestigious, the most elite. And if I'm not mistaken, it also has the most students attending. So when UC makes a decision, the ripple effects of that decision are everywhere. I think it's really interesting that UC is making that decision because it's my strongly held opinion that for students who go to underserved schools, there are not that many ways that they can distinguish themselves. So let's imagine that you go to an underserved school and most people in your school go to a state college when they graduate or they don't go to school at all. And you took all of the AP classes that were offered. There were only like two or three. You didn't think that your course curriculum was particularly challenging. If you don't take the SATs, when you apply to college, the college admissions rep who looks at your application knows the high schools in your area and knows that your high school is not particularly strong and that you likely did not get a sound education that will allow you to compete on the college level. Maybe they're right, maybe they're wrong, but that's their perception of the school. And in the admissions world, their perception is the thing that matters. If you don't take the SATs, this person who's looking at your college application looks at the classes that you've taken, your schedule strength and the scores that you've gotten, but also knows grade inflation is rampant at the school. I mean, I've worked in schools in Brooklyn where if you sit down and shut up, you get an 85. And if sit down, shut up and raise your hand once in a while, you get a 95. College admissions reps also know that. And they are thinking about that when they're looking at your application and evaluating its strength. If you are the valedictorian from that school, you may be capable of critical thinking and you may have had a really strong, rigorous education that you might have cobbled together from a couple teachers that really liked you and believed in you and taught you extra stuff outside of class or some kind of college program that you enrolled in. Or maybe you didn't. With the SAT, there's a clear way to measure where you stand on the sort of bell curve of everybody in the United States taking the SAT. If you do have critical thinking skills and you have accumulated the knowledge that you need to be able to succeed in college, when you take the SAT, your score will reflect that. If you don't take the SAT, college admissions reps are kind of like, well, we've never had anybody succeed from this school before, so I don't really have, feel comfortable taking this person because I don't think they will succeed. And please understand, college admissions reps are not out to get you. They don't want to accept kids that they know will fail. I've had college admissions officers tell me from two particular highly selective schools, one was an Ivy League and one was very elite, small liberal arts college. And both of them said, students who can't get past a 550 on both sections will not be able to hack college level math and science. And in terms of social sciences and humanities, we could accept a 500, 500. But kids who are scoring lower than that, it doesn't matter how much support we give them. It doesn't matter how much remedial help we give them. They will not succeed because the work is just too hard. If you need to distinguish yourself, sometimes the SAT is the only way to do that. From my perspective, since it has helped my kids distinguish themselves and get into really exciting elite places. And remember that the value of going to an elite college or university is a couple of things. One is networking. So after you graduate, you're going to have a network of people who graduated with you that are doing interesting things who maybe can help you. Two, the value of having a highly selective college on your resume is that some employers will be more interested in you. There are some employers who throw out resumes with schools that they've never heard of. And I've worked in offices where that happened. The other thing to keep in mind is how much money you'll make after graduation. There's a website, collegescorecard.ed.gov, that allows you to see how much money you make by major, by university and college, the year that you graduate. So for instance, if you graduate with a degree in computer science from Harvard, you make about $128,000. If you graduate with a degree from a state university, there's a state university in Pennsylvania that I'm thinking of specifically, you make about 66,000. So it's the same degree, right? Computer science, major. Harvard, you make literally twice as much as a state university. A lot of people are like, a degree is a degree. Okay, true, but I'd rather start at 128,000.
right? Because my next pay raise is going to be 135,000 and I'd like to make more money faster. So keep in mind that there are a lot of reasons that it's worth it to distinguish yourself. A lot of people are wondering, should I still take the SATs because so many colleges have gone test optional? The short answer is yes, but I'll tell you why. Yes, a lot of colleges have gone test optional, but I have heard college admissions officers say point blank that if one kid has SAT scores and the other kid doesn't, the prevailing assumption is going to be that the kid without SAT scores couldn't do well on the test. So you might be saying, hey, that's really unfair. I don't disagree with you. I'm just here to report the news. So I know that that can feel unfairly prejudiced, especially to kids in urban areas where it's significantly harder to get a seat than it is in suburban or rural areas. What a lot of families are doing is flying to different areas right before the test or taking a long road trip right before the test, staying with grandma and grandpa, wherever they are, just finding a way to take the SAT. I see that a lot of students are asking, and some of my kids have asked me this also, if the school is test optional, can I still send my scores if I get a good score? Yes, absolutely. Colleges are happy to consider the scores that you send them. I did have a college admissions official say to me, if the person is not sending in test scores, um, we assume that that's because they couldn't do well on the test. And so that is part of our calculus. So again, whether you think that's fair or not, I'm, I'm just the messenger. Is it a smart idea to send in test scores? I think it is if you can do well on them. And there's no reason that you can't do well on them now, the same reason that you could do well on them before. Obviously Khan Academy is free. Test prep in general is something that I have found you get what you pay for. If you take a class where there are 30 people in the room and they're just teaching you according to a set of sort of set steps, then you will get some SAT prep. If you work one-on-one -on -one with a highly experienced tutor who has a decade or more experience teaching the SAT, you'll probably achieve better results. I have been teaching the SAT, for instance, since 2006. I know the test extremely well. I know the old test. I know the new test. I know the overlaps with the ACT. I know the things that are different on the ACT. And so when you're sitting down with a tutor who knows the test extremely well, that can help focus your practice. And that way you're actually spending less time practicing, as counterintuitive as that might seem. The bigger question of, should I send my SAT scores? The answer is absolutely yes, if you have them. And you absolutely can send them whether or not the college says it's test optional. There are very few colleges that will not look at test scores if you send them. A lot of families are also reaching out to me and saying, I'm not going to submit SAT scores because my student isn't doing well on the test or I don't want to spend the money and I think that my student will be able to get in without them. Totally cool. It is your right to make that decision. But in that case, how are you going to distinguish yourself? Because there are going to be a lot of people applying with high GPAs, no SAT scores. How do you make yourself stand out from the crowd? The way that you can do that is twofold. One is your college essay. So remember your college essay is 650 words. It should talk about a change in yourself, in your life, a thing that has changed and how you were before and what you became after as a result of it. So whatever your essay is, it should be that. And it should be something that gives us a sense of who you are so that once I've read it, I feel like I know you, I know a challenge that you faced. I know a little bit about your tenacity, your grit, your resilience. And I know a little bit about how you think about yourself. It should give me kind of a window into you. That's one thing that really makes the difference. The other thing that I would strongly suggest is filling out every supplemental question. So a lot of kids, by the time they're doing their college applications are so stressed out from having done all this work in senior year and all this SAT prep or ACT prep. And they're just like, oh my God, I want to skip any question that I don't absolutely have to do. Well, the smart thing to do is unfortunately the opposite. You want to fill out literally everything they ask for and you want to really think about the answers to those questions. So often there are supplemental essays that are optional. I would answer each one of them. And as you're thinking about writing an essay, whether it's the long main college essay that's 650 words or one of the supplementals, as you're starting to write the essay, think about what the person reading it should take away from it. What do you want the person reading it to think after they've written the essay? And you can do a thing that teachers often call backwards planning. So start with the feeling you want them to have and then think about what things about you illustrate that feeling and try to come up with the sort of turning point in your life that got you to be that person that make people feel that way about you.